Hello, my name's Carl and I'm the creator of DrawShield.net. So, you want to find out more about the preferences for DrawShield. You've come to the right place. Let's take a look. So, the DrawShield preferences. Let's take a look at what we can change with the preferences. I've drawn here a simple red lion with some fancy claws and a tongue. And we can change the preferences by clicking the preferences button. This brings up a new pane that moves the shield out of the way down to the bottom until we're finished with it. There are a number of things that you can modify here. Firstly, the visual appearance. Now, these are mostly for fun, but you might find some useful effects. The default here is just flat, which is the plain shield as you see it, um, no visual effects, no filtering. The other filters apply uh, particular special effects. Um, Shiny, for example, tries to make the shield appear as if it's a little bit curved. It's got a little bit of a shadow here, got a little bit of a highlight here. Uh, most of them are fairly self-explanatory. Um, stone makes it look like it's uh, carved on, on, carved and painted on some stonework. Um, vellum, the um, makes it look like perhaps it's been painted on some sort of animal skin. And there are a couple of others that are possibly uh, less useful. Plaster makes it look a bit like. Um, it's been carved in, in bas relief plaster, but it's not um, particularly useful. And there's a couple of others that have special purposes. Really, ripples is intended if you're drawing flags. Can't really see much of a difference on, uh, on a shield, but it does look better on flags when there are lots of horizontal lines. And again, fabric is really intended for uh, use in designing fabric patterns. I generally recommend leaving it set to flat uh, because that will give you the, the pure colours that we're going to talk about in a moment. If you want to do something uh, more fancy than the effects that are offered here, then the best thing to do is download the image into some sort of paint program and use the effects of that, of that paint program. Looking further down the preferences panel, we come to the palette. Now, in heraldry, there's no defined exact colour for the various tinctures. Um, all that ghouls actually means in heraldry is something that's kind of red. So what's happened over, the, uh, over time is that various people and organisations have defined various palettes and they've given um, the heraldic tinctures specific hex colour codes. And what this part of the preferences pane lets you do is, is change the colour codes to a set of predefined ones. Um, now, sadly, the origin of the draw shield set of colours is lost in, in history. Um, I started Draw Shield many years ago and I have no idea where I originally found that set of colours from. Um, I've left it as the default because it's the same set that's always been used. However, if you want something a bit more um, official, then I would recommend using the, the Wikipedia um, palette. It's very subtly different, um, but it is the colour palette that is used for all of the coats of arms that you'll find on Wikipedia. Um, another good set, somewhat darker, is, is the Weapon Wiki. Um, that's a, a German site with a lot of um, coats of arms. That comes out slightly darker overall, uh, a little bit more subdued. And there's uh, an emoji set if you want something a bit more brighter and a bit more fun. Um, as I said, if you want something, uh, then either use the default set of draw shield colours 
or Wikipedia. If you've got no other preference, then, then use one of two. Either of them are good. There are two other special purpose um, palettes. There's hatching, which is actually a heraldic method of showing colours in monochrome, just using black and white, but still giving you an idea of what the colours are. Um, this actually works best with very simple designs. So we'll just use uh, a shield with some geometric shapes on it. And as you can see, that, that comes out quite nicely. Um, this doesn't work very well with complex shapes or when charges get rotated um, or inverted. Sometimes the, the hatching comes out incorrectly there. So it's best only for very simple shapes. And finally, we've got the outline mode, which will just draw the edges, um, even if they're not normally visible. Uh, if we switch back to our um, our lion here, uh, that comes out quite nicely. This is really just intended for uh, downloading and you can add your own colours or you can print it and colour it in. Great for creating colouring for either children or adults. So that was the, the, the palettes that are available. Palettes refer only to the predefined heraldic tinctures. Um, and to be honest, there aren't a lot of those. Even if you kind of stretch the definition to some more modern colours, there are probably only about 20 strictly heraldic tinctures that you can actually use. Um, the Preferences pane allows you to switch on more colours. But as you can see, by default, they're not used. In general, I wouldn't use them unless you really have to. Um, there are some uh, special purposes, special reasons for using them. You might choose to use the named web colours if you are creating a flag. Flags have a much wider range of colours. Um, there'll be another video all about flags, but uh, I would generally only use the named web colours if you're drawing flags. Warhammer is really designed for uh, drawing pauldrons for uh, Warhammer 40,000 use. And the set of tartan colours is uh, really intended for fabric design. Again, there will in future be separate videos on all of those topics. Feel free to um, take a look at them and experiment, uh, but by default I would recommend leaving them off. If you want to see all of the colours, then look under the uh, Create menu at the Visual Catalogue. Here are all the, the different palettes. Um, the, the default Draw Shield palette, Wikipedia, WAP and Wiki. Uh, now you'll notice that not every colour is actually defined under each palette. Um, for example, yellow ochre doesn't appear in the Wikipedia palette. Uh, if that's the case and you use yellow ochre, it will just default to the draw shield default colours. So it will always be drawn with a colour. Uh, the other things you'll find here are if you want to look at all the at the named web colours, uh, you've, you've probably seen them before. There there's, are well over 200 of those. Um, the uh, Warhammer colours are uh, quite a nice range of colours uh, with some very interesting names. Uh, and finally the Tartan colours are a set of uh, names particular to fabric designs, but they're all under the visual catalogue that you can find under the Create menu. Moving a bit further on, we can change the shape of the shield using the Preferences pane. Now, different traditions of heraldry use different shapes for the shield. Uh, again, if you've, got, uh, if you've got no particular preference, I would always recommend using the heater shape. The heater shape is guaranteed to always work with, uh, with layouts and um, positioning of charges. If you use some of the other shield shapes, then you may find that charges are overlapping the edges, uh, they're not quite arranged correctly. Um, something like um, the Swiss shield here, um, if, you, if you quarter a, a Swiss shield, you might find the bottom quarters um, cut off. If we draw our line there, our line fits and that, and that works fine. Um, but just be aware that 
uh, many of the larger ordinaries might not work quite so neatly on the other shield shapes. Only in fact the bordure is guaranteed to work on all of them. Um, I have got some work in hand to try and improve the support of the other shield shapes. Um, and things like French, uh, the French shape is useful because it, it does occupy um, a very large, does give you a very large space um, to work on. And in fact, if you have a highly quartered shield, the French shape is automatically chosen because those quarters will fit better in the bottom there. Let's just turn on the um, Wikipedia palette again. There we go. So we've got our our nice colours. Um, some of the other shapes have special purposes uh, and aren't really heraldic. They're here uh, just for fun or for other purposes. Um, the swatch is intended for fabric design. The pauldron is for warhammer. Stamps are just for fun if you want to design a stamp. And the flag here also has a, a special uh, additional setting for its proportions, how wide it is compared to how tall it is. Um, I won't go into any detail on that yet because flags is quite a complicated subject and we'll cover it in much more depth in another video. The final section in the, um, in the preferences panel just sets a couple of the editor options. Now by default when you're editing things you'll find that we've got a, a, a quite intelligent editor here. It's got, it's got line numbers, um, it highlights where it can some useful things, uh, whether it recognises particularly the it highlights tinctures um, and usefully can also highlight comments which is, is quite useful. Um, the other thing it does is um, it will it will highlight your your strings um, like that. So it's quite it can be quite useful in that respect. There are also these editor buttons that you can use here. Um, I'll go through those in more detail in yet another video. Um, however, there have been occasions when the JavaScript that runs this editor doesn't always work. So you can uh, turn it off if you have problems with it or you can turn it off if, if you just don't use it and you find it annoying. Uh, if, you, if you turn it off, that editor box goes away. It just becomes a simple HTML text box, no numbering, no line numbers, and no function buttons there. Similarly, we have a set of memories here that you can use very much like calculator memories. Uh, I'll do yet another video on how these work, but we can um, store a work in progress in these memories um, and, and recall them when needed. Again, if you don't use that functionality and find those buttons to be annoying, you can just turn them off in the preferences pane and they're gone. And you've got the very nice, clean, simple design there. So that's um, everything you need to know about the preferences pane for the moment. You may find in the future that I add some new filters of visual appearance. I might add some new palettes and I might add some new shield shapes. But the, the preferences will continue to work very much in the same way. And I hope that's all clear to you. If you do have any problems with them, please get in touch using the, the contact form here or email me. I'm always happy to help. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If there are other things you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below or using the contact page that you can find on drawshield.net. Thank you and have a good day.